Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Carlo Calmasini. I'm one of the moderator for today's session, and I would like to welcome everyone to this BIOF session. Title is uh, Building a Framework for Clinical Trial Participants' Data Reutilization for a Fully Transparent and Ethical Ecosystem. Uh, today's meeting is about the IMI Facilitate Project, uh, which aims to understand and address what patients want. Um, let's take a couple of minutes to wait for the late comments, and then we will start uh, with the, today's session. Uh, one one more minute again. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, people are still joining uh, this session. Again, my name is Carlo Palmasini, and I'm one of the three moderators for today's session of this P of meeting, which is about the IMI facility project aiming at understanding and addressing what patient wants in terms of uh, reutilization of uh, clinical trial participants' data in a transparent and ethical ecosystem. Uh, just another half a minute, and then uh, we are about to start. And thank you for your patience. Okay, it's uh, three minutes past uh, um, 2.30. So uh, I guess we can start again. Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Carlo Camasini and uh, you can see my colleague Virginia Romano. Uh, we are two all out of the three uh, moderators for today. And uh, uh, it is time to start. So I give the floor to Virginia to introduce you to facilitate the project and explain to you what is going to happen in this be of session. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you, Carlo. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Very happy to be here for this session. I'm very curious to hear all about your reactions to our project and our work uh, that we prepare for today's session. So let's start from the start. Uh, I will briefly introduce you Facilitate, which is the IMI for years project Carlo and I are working in together with Veronica Popa, who is later joining us. Well, she's here. She will join the discussion when it's time. And she's also working in Facilitate with us. So uh, from <clears throat> where 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 does Facilitate comes from? Where where does Facilitate need for Facilitate to to work comes from. It comes from the, the fact that the current availability of both qualitative and quantitative health data is unprecedented in history. But uh, even if clinical trials generate a large amount of high quality data, uh, only rarely these data are returned to participants and also uh, due to the fact that the data are generally stored in separate repositories, cannot be easily reused for other studies. So this project, Facilitate, which stands for Framework for Clinical Trial Participant Data Reutilization for a Fully Transparent and Ethical Ecosystem, it's the acronym, um, 
uh, is concentrated on developing an ethical, legal, and regulatory framework that will allow the return of clinical trial data to participants and other health professionals involved in their care. And it also wants to create a process that allows the data collected to be reused in future research. So today, Carlo, if you can uh, go to the next slide, please. I will just show you the, um, <clears throat> not not the the one before, because I didn't. Yeah, I I put this slide here to to show you which is the project uh, uh, website, and um, so if you want to to take a look more in depth about the project, you find all the information there. And yes, now we can go to today's agenda. So what we'll we'll be doing today is presenting you with, um, well, just a second. Uh, maybe we can uh, present um, the agenda first and then I will talk about my colleagues. So we are introducing the, the session. We will set the scene so I will talk about uh, the uh, goal of today's session. And then we will present you with three fictional cases and we will ask you to react to that. So Carlo, if you can skip to next slide, we already presented ourselves, but anyway, it's uh, Carlo Calmasini and me, Virginia Romano. We are both working for UREC Research, which is a, um, an institution working in Bolzano, Italy, and Veronica Papa, who works for Euroridis. Um, and next slide, please. Thank you. So this would be facilitated, but I, I guess I anticipate this. So you can, yes, thank you. So as I uh, introduced before, uh, facilitated has, facilitate has two different souls. One is the issue of returning data to patients. And the second one is the secondary use of those data. And uh, today's session, we just concentrate on this process, which the project is trying to build from scratch, because actually today in clinical trials data, it's very rare that data are allowed to be reused in future research. So we, we are working on building this process to make it ethical, to build it thanks to the um, uh, involvement and participation of patients in this building process. And today it's one of those moments in which we go back to patients and to other stakeholders and we ask them to uh, explain their views on this problem. But what is the problem is that this process does not exist yet in reality. So what we will be doing today is to ask you to take a leap of faith and to uh, put your feet in the shoes of fictitious character and trying to imagine what your, your reaction would be if asked to uh, allow and to consent uh, to the reuse of your data in case you participated in a clinical trial. So please, since this is not an easy task, uh, if there's anything we took for granted in describing the, the frame in which we will ask you to take decision and to share them with us, if anything is not clear, if you have any question, just raise your hand and, and ask question. We would like this to be as more interactive as possible given the number of people and the technical means we have. Uh, next slide, please, Carlo. Thanks. Uh, um, now, can you go back just one slide? Thank you. Um, yeah, so um, I kind of anticipated this as well, but of course the, the whole idea of facilities is getting to change the role of patients that in, in, that's why 
we're trying to involve patients. And of course, um, given that we are trying to imagine a future in which patients have greater power, with this also come a lot of responsibilities and issues and ethical conundrums that patients need to put their minds on and, and reflect. And this is also for us a very interesting outcome, possible outcome of this session. Next slide, please. Those are the stakeholders that are involved in Facilitate. So we are now uh, talking to patients and we give, of course, uh, a great uh, um, importance to patients' reaction, but we are also working with clinicians, with pharma and health tech industries, and with regulators, because of course, um, Facilitate is aiming to have uh, a worldwide kind of process, a frame process that, that would need to be adapted to the uh, national regulations and legal uh, environment that might be um, very different from each other and this is uh, of course the greatest challenge maybe in this project so that's just to give you an idea of the the width of this um, enterprise we are in uh, next slide please yeah so those are our three fictional characters uh, we gave them names of course um, and what we will do is uh, to present their stories their clinical trial story and we will give you information about them and then we will ask you two types of questions the first one uh, will be a closed question you can just reply yes or no and you will instantly see the percentage of the poll that we're doing right now. Uh, after that, uh, we will uh, try to go deeper in your motivations in replying yes or no. And we will give you the chance to use a group map, which is basically an interactive uh, dashboard in which you can join and add your motivation like other people's motivation, add uh, information, comments, whatever you you want. So yes, um, next slide. I already, um, okay, I, I um, yeah, I think I already gave you the netiquette if you want but there's no netiquette as long as you want to uh if anything please if anything is not clear just raise your hand and moderators and me and my colleagues will try to uh, let you speak and ask uh, as soon as possible given that we have such a busy agenda but we, we will try to do our best to to be responsive as much as possible so yes this is valentine vignette so i will present her case and then as i told you we will ask you a few questions so valentine is a 43 year old woman she participated in a clinical trials two years ago and following uh to uh, the early discovery of a lung cancer unfortunately uh, during a, a routine testing Following the diagnosis, her medical specialist explained to her that her best chance for recovery laid in participating in a tr clinical trial on the use of a new molecule compatible with the underlying mutation of her disease. Uh, Valentine was then contacted by the public, by public institution proponent of the trial for the enrollment. At that time, she received a comprehensive explanation of the trial pathway she would undergo. During enrollment into the trial, 
She interacted with a clinician who explained to her very precisely the path she was going to face, the risk, the possible side effect, and the presumed efficacy of the trial product in her particular case, and was also given the contact information of the doctor who followed her during the enrollment, okay, and was invited to contact him for any concern, worsening or changing or, of her condition. So she had a very positive overall experience of this clinical trial. In preparation for the first session of drug administration, she had a blood collection based on which an analysis of her DNA was performed. And during the course of the trial, she cyclically underwent blood draws for periodic laboratory analysis and semi-annual total body PET scans. Thus, the data collected during the trial were mainly blood test reports, total body PET scans, reports and images, and genetic data. Moreover, during the trial, Valentin was asked to authorize the Public Research Institute to recontact her in the future about the potential reuse of her clinical data in other research. And this is, of course, what uh, matters for us. Valentine reaction, so Valentine um, experience has been uh, very positive, positive. She has successfully participated in the trial. She started two years ago, I remember. And her disease is now in remission. Her attitude towards scientific research has always been open. Valentine believes that the more data shared by patients, the better the chances are for many people to recover from diseases like hers or even much more serious ones. But now that she's cured, however, she does not wish to have further contacts with the institution connected to her medical situation and be reminded of her illness. She just wishes to undergo to periodical visit, which she cannot, of course, avoid. But she doesn't really want to have contacts with the medical context more than necessary. For this reason, Valentine has authorized to be recontacted, but plans on giving the widest consent possible in order not to be recontacted ever again in the future. So she planned two years ago to, whenever she was going to be recontacted again, to tell the people that she wishes her data to be used as long as she doesn't have to put her mind into this thing. She, she just wants to give this uh, as broad as possible consent to reuse of her clinical trial data, okay? She's not interested in knowing for, for what purposes and by which institution her data may be reused for future research. She's aware that her data could also be reused by private entities and even not for curative oriented trials only, but it seems to her like a necessary evil for her data to be shared and reused as much as possible. So all she wants is to forget all about her illness as much as possible and go on with her life. So that's Valentine's story, that's her situation. And if this is clear for anyone, and if you don't have like specific question, anything that you didn't understand, um, um, I, I, I just, I'm reading that there is someone having problems with hearing. Um, Okay. Is everything okay, Diana? I I don't know, but there there might be. I think you froze for ten seconds only, Virginia, but I can hear you and and see you properly now. Is the 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 fact that I have been frozen meant they didn't hear me as well, or the voice went on? I just want to know if I have to go back and explain something they might have missed. No, we didn't miss anything. Thank okay, you. great. So this is Valentine. Uh, and now we will skip to the next slide, just one click. 
and we will present you with the first question, which is a poll. So you uh, can just answer yes or no. And the question is, do you think that in Valentine case, so it's lung, lung cancer, the severity of Ill illness influences the patient's willingness to consent to reuse in the future? Yes or no, please. And you will be able, I think you can all see the reaction in real time as I am. And that's interesting. Yes. <clears throat> um. I don't know uh, when, I think we have 20 on 29. Is it over? Yes, these are the final results on the screen now. Okay, so we, we have a slight preference uh, on the yes for 60% on 30%. Um, do I have to share results or is everybody able to see this, right? Yes, they are. They yes, are. it's all good, it's all good. Yes. Like, great. So if Carlo, you can click again, um, we can go deeper now and trying to, uh, what I would like ideally to know is what brought you to answer yes or no. So if you think that this influence uh, to consent is negative or positive, so it, if it's something that pushes her to share or not to share her data in the future and why. So um, I think Diana now is opening our first group map and will allow you to add details uh and reasons and motivations and whatever comment you feel like sharing that might help us understanding more about your position on this so i've just shared the group map in order to access it please go to the link that i've shared in the chat so you're able to add your input on the group map. You can do so very easily. Just click on the plus sign here, add your comment, and then you can like other people's comments as well or respond to what they just say. Okay. I would also like if, if um, you have any question about everything until now uh, anything that you might need clarification about mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, no Okay. Okay, um, I, I just try to address some of the very interesting comments you're adding, but we are about the psychological stability we are assuming she has, of course, in this particular case, fictional case. Um, okay. 
trans and transparency are more important than severity. I think you are all, even if 60% of people reply yes, uh, it seems to me that the people commenting are more aware of the fact that it is not the severity of the illness to be the most important factor to, um, to, to motivate Valentine's willingness to share her data. That, that's what I'm kind of absorbing now from what you I can from what I can read. Uh, okay. Um, I, maybe I can add something. We have no information on why she made this choice. So it can only be speculation. Yes and no, because I was trying to justify Valentine's choice by saying she had a positive experience. She was in a very trusting environment. She was accompanied throughout her clinical trial experience uh, um, by a team of people that were able to correctly communicate with her, that informed her, that she trusted. And I was trying to suggest that her experience was very positive. So uh, maybe I think we can assume that in this case, Valentine's was also uh, positively biased by the context she 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 went through her clinical trial. We tend to overestimate. Them. So wanting to use the data to help others is the motivation motivator. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's very interesting. Some patients are very happy for their data to be shared. Shared. Others do not want it shared in any circumstances. And obviously there are people in between, but it doesn't relate to how unwell they are. So again, I would say overall that you as a, as a whole don't really think that the severity of illness has much to do with willingness to share data. So this is what it, it appears to me, even if 60% replied yes. I, I keep on having the impression that, that adding motivation is going to slightly let you shift towards the no to to the close question. So the severity of illness has uh, doesn't have a very, doesn't have an impact on, it's like you think that severity of illness is a subject and willingness to share data is something completely separate from it. Uh, sorry, Virginia, this is Carlo. Yeah. Uh, we should uh, move on to the following uh, mm -hmm. question. Yeah. I was, Thank I you. Was Thank you. Okay, so you can just skip to the next um, question. Uh, and again, we will have four closed question and four um, open question for each of the three vignettes, but we are trying to 
we are not 100% sure we'll be able to get to the third vignette. So we'll have Valentine and Richard, they are kind of the two extremes of a continuum. And after that, we will uh, see if we have time for the third case, which is kind of in between. So the second question is, do you relate to Valentine's will of giving a kind of as broad as possible consent to the reuse of her clinical dia clinical trial data, yes or no? Thank you. Okay, of course, if there's anyone, I, I take it for granted, if there's anyone who wants to, to talk, uh, just raise your hands and the moderator will give you the chance to talk. If you have questions or anything. Oops, sorry. So 75% is 12 over 26. Can we give them? few more seconds to reply. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, okay. So seventy five percent of you as a whole replied yes. And so we go we can go to the deepening open question that is connected to this. Uh, Carlo, I'm not sure what I'm looking at, but if you can click, um, mm, can you explain what are the factors that, in your opinion, would lead someone, would lead you to consent in that way? And so now I think Diana is going to share the second group map and you can please feel free to add your motivations to this if you relate or not and why. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, um I'm not sure I can see the second group group map. Hi, Virginia, do you see it now? I see the answers coming on the screen. Mm. Yes, I can see it right. now. Thanks. Okay. Great. Trust keeps on appearing as a very, very important uh, element. And we assure you that it was um, 
I'm very reassured because in the first steps of Facilitate, we had a, uh, some rounds of focus groups with patients and other stakeholders and trust uh, from the beginning, the very beginning of this project uh, mm -hmm. has appeared as a very, very important and basic element on which to build uh, the project and possibly the reason for its success. So I'm very happy to see and to have constant confirmation that trust is so important. Sure, there is also the idea of altruism and willing to help research, but also to have better chances to find a cure for people deciding to share their data. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, I try to address this comment. I would want to be clear. Please, please, Carlos, stop me. Stop me when I go over the time we have. I I don't know how much we can stay here as well. I'm very glad that you're helping me with the timing because this is I I could spend all day reading this. It's so interesting. Um, sure. Um, I think we should maybe move to the next question. Really. Right, right. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the third question is, um, Valentine is not interested in knowing for what reasons her data will be reused in other research. Would you be interested in knowing more about this future research? Yes or no? <clears throat> um, yes. Yes, I can see the poll. Okay, so 95% would be interested in knowing. And I was anticipating that Valentine's is kind of a, a weird person. So please, um, let's try to add your motivation in the group map to this, the following open question. What would you be interested in knowing about the future use of your data in other research. So what, what are the elements? What would you like to know? What would you like to be informed about? What are the things you would like to know? Thank you. And I think now Diana is opening the third group map. Yeah, open. Okay, why they would be using it, what the outcomes are, what they will be using it for again, what the research is, 
who will be using it. Scientific curiosity, objectives and outcomes. Explain it very simple and concrete manner. That's very interesting. Scientific curiosity, what is the objective and if outcome will help patients. So who, how, what for, why? Okay. Okay. Okay, um, there's a comment which says it is non-profit or commercial use. Happy to provide data for free. If non-profit, if commercial, I want to get paid. Great. We will uh, try to go deeper in these um, issues with Richard's vignette, which is the next one. Um, the next uh, fictitious story we created. Uh, Valentine is not interested, so we couldn't go deeper here, but I'm glad there is this comment here. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm since we are you're still maybe writing the last lines, I just want to remind you uh, that this group maps will stay open for one week until next Thursday. So feel free if you have a change of heart or if you want to add anything to just uh, go back and add your comments. Uh, these comments, especially the 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 open the, your your comments to the open questions, are going to be very valuable for us. And on the basis of what you write, we will uh, write to you all a follow up email in which we'll give you our first analysis of this work. So thank you. Okay, shall we move on? to the last uh, Valentine's question. Carlo, I'm not sure where I am. Yes, we are moving okay. on, just a second. Okay. Thank you. Okay, question number four. I think you can all read it, but I'll read it for you anyway. Um, <clears throat> Valentine, Valentine undergoes a clinical trial for which she has her DNA analyzed. Do you think genomic data should be treated as all other data types? Yes or no? Should genomic data be treated differently? Okay, we have we are, you are replying to the poll. We'll give you a couple of thirty seconds more. Ten seconds. Okay, ten seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the poll is closed and. Hmm, we can see that genomic data 
are difficult to uh i guess we 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 have a very even kind of reply so uh let's go to the group map and try to understand what are the the, the, the doubts and the question you might have about this or the comments. So could you give us your reasons both for replying yes or no uh, to the previous question and add details so that we can go deeper in this gen genomic data issue? Thank you. Okay, it cannot be anonymized. That's true. I'm I'm sure about that. Okay, I'm unsure about how other data is treated, so was not sure how to reply. I guess the issue, the main issue with genomic data is that they cannot they cannot really really be anonymized while other data can. Uh, and there are other issues connected to gen genomic data in a future word. So let, let me try to see. Mm -hmm. data breach so the fact that genomic data might be more difficult to protect might be more usable by various institution is it morally wrong to share or to use the recipe for a person? That's a good question. Okay, whenever, unless Carlo or Veronica has anything to comment about, uh, and since we're a bit uh, ahead of time, I think we can also present Richard's case, which is uh, exciting because Richard is very different from Valentine, and I'm, I'm sure it will give you the occasion to think about these issues from a completely different perspective. Oh, uh, yes, uh, I would I would say so. And so uh, whenever ready, um, Diana can just switch. Yes, thank okay. you to um, okay. Robert Spignet. Uh, thank you, Virginia. And... Uh, I take the lead now to present to you um, Robert, who is a 65 years old person with Parkinson's disease, who participated in several uh, trials in the past and was asked for consent to be recontacted for secondary use. Let me tell you something a bit more specific about Robert. Uh, his condition is incurable, but much can be done in terms of managing the symptomatology associated with the disease. 
Robert, who has already participated in other clinical trials during his lifetime, recently underwent testing on a new molecule that is hypothesized to help people in his condition better manage the, mon the motor symptoms associated with the disease. Uh, on, on this latest occasion, Robert signed consent to be reconducted for the potential secondary use of the data collected during the trial. Now, when contacted again two years after the end of his trial, he is presented with the option of deciding to consent to the use of his data according to objectives of research, type of research institution, and also about the reuse or not of specific categories of data that Robert can freely decide to include or exclude from the reusable data list. Finally, Robert can also decide whether to be contacted again and how often about the reuse of such data whenever they are required. After years of frequenting clinical and drug trial testing settings, Robert is determined that his data will not be shared in full and wants to be informed and asked a new constant in detail whenever they are reused. In general, he does not want to contribute to research with a commercial use only, but is willing to consider giving permission for the use of these data, even then, as long as he can well understand the objectives and details of each individual trial. Because he is retired, he has sufficient free time and is willing to employ this time in this kind of in-depth research. This activity also provides him with the opportunity to keep abreast of cutting edge trials with respect to his pathology. So this is pretty much uh, the big picture about Robert, so 65 years old in Parkinson's disease, and uh, um, essentially uh, the point that we're dealing with with Robert is the constant specifically informed consent, specifically according to the goal of research, the type of research, the type of research institution using the data, the type of data, and the when and how often to be recontacted. So, uh, Diana, if uh, uh, you want to, uh, thanks, to share the first question that we would like to ask uh, to participants, does chronicity of illness influence the patient's willingness to consent to reuse? So the question is yes or no. Uh, the chronicity um, of the um, the chronicity of the illness influence the patient's willingness uh, to reuse. So let's see how the poll goes. So far, we had 12 respondents. Uh, let's wait a bit to reach, uh, say, a threshold of at least 20, if possible. It's uh, roughly 50-50. Uh, 19 participants. Let's wait a few more seconds to see whether someone else is replying. And uh, okay, I think we are done uh, with the poll, and it's uh, roughly close to 50%, uh, 45% voted yes. And 50% voted no. Uh, now that's the poll, and uh, I would move on with uh, the group map and the question why, how does it influence patient willingness to consent for refuse? So um, it's a sort of read down on, of the question of whether chronicity of illness influence the patient willingness to consent of reuse. We would like to know from you why this is happening and uh, what, what kind of motivations 
could be behind uh, the willingness to uh, reuse or not to reuse. I think the group map is should be visible by now. Uh, you said no, but some people they might hope that the cure might be found in their lifetime, uh, which is uh, rather understandable, I think. Uh, it is. It remains an individual choice, and uh, that absolutely uh, reasonable. Uh, perhaps we might be interested also in the motivations behind saying yes or no. Brexit was decided on a smaller margin. Yes, I do agree with that. Uh, but uh, in our case, for research purposes, uh, it's not only um, the percentage of yes or no that matters. Uh, it's mostly about the motivations behind choice that matters in terms of potential incentives of people uh, based on their, re uh, on their response. Trust and transparency are more important. Of course, the kind of um, prospective um, expectancy of future improvements uh, due to the uh, reuse of data, it's uh, definitely one factor. Um, yeah, definitely in this case, the patient is a sort of expert patient. Uh, he's a long-term experienced uh, person, and so he, he, in this specific vignette, um, he knows exactly what he wants to see and what to expect. I am an innovator, so I am. I might be biased, and that is mm, might be true, of course. But uh, also, of course, uh, there's a certain percentage of the population uh, who can be classified as innovators so it's still relevant and uh, might not might be the case that it's not that biased uh, we had uh, several responses so far yeah the question was not about his experience but how chronic his illness is yeah, that, that's definitely true. Uh, but uh, sometimes these two things are somehow overlapping. Um, chronicity entails uh, also being become experienced uh, overall at the end. Carlo, if I can join yeah. in commenting, I think this comment is very interesting because most of comments say, uh, in both Valentine and Robert case that the condition, the illness is not relevant. And in this comments, we have kind of the other side of the coin. Uh, this person saying some research studies try new drugs or repurpose drugs, which may offer fairly immediate benefit or sometimes not. But patients looking at the prospect of death or permanent, permanent disability are very motivated. So it seems like these two could be the extremes of our spectrum. So we say the illness is not relevant, but the illness and the condition and the severity and the chronicity might be very relevant if we're thinking about the chance to get an immediate benefit. Uh, what do you think? Do you see the comment?
Okay, I think at this point we might move on with the following question. We don't want to get too late. So, uh, um, at your convenience, uh, Diana, we just uh, move on with the following question, number two. Thank you very much. And the question number two is still a yes or no question. Uh, would you have a clear mind if asked to authorize reuse of your clinical trial data indicating either specific categories of research, specific typologies of data, specific research goals, and specific typologies of institutions you wish to consent for reuse? And the options are yes or no, of course. Let's see how the poll goes. So it's uh, the question is about uh, authorizing reuse uh, and uh, for the consent, uh, sorry, uh, consent for the reuse for different um, categories of research, type of data, research goals, and type of institutions. And um, sorry, Robert, I'm I'm finding this question really confusing. I don't know whether it's there's too many questions in the question. <laughs> oh, well, the, I understand your point. Um, the question is, um, is only one, of course, but it entails different uh, categories of items in the sense that... Because um, it's asking agree, what I ag agree, Agreeing in the consent for reuse might be related to different... Uh, aspects or features of the research, such as the categories of research, typologies of data, our research goals, and type of institutions. So all these things might affect your consent of reuse. So and, uh, you're not asking whether I'd say yes or not, you're asking whether I'd understand. No, I, uh, actually what she's asking, if, if asked today, if asked now, if you would know to identify these categories, Right. Okay. So, you know but what, I need to check. Yeah. Yeah, you know if you, which if you have in mind these categories and you would be able to identify them and say, I would like to share this kind of data, but not this kind of data. I would like to share with these institutions, but not these ones. Um, I would like to share for this purpose of research, but not that one, okay. and so on. So it's that's a messy it, question. It, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit complicated, but yes. Yeah, yeah it thank you for your question, though. And, and we are sorry, but we wanted to understand if, let's say, tomorrow you have to take this decision and you are asked a lot of information, would you know what to answer? Or yeah. because you already thought about that, you have a clear idea or not at all. So that, that's basically the question. Would you have a clear mind? Would you already know or not? Super. Okay, I can answer that question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank if you it, essentially, if you're not clear about one or more of these uh, features, uh, clearly you don't have a clear mind. That's the whole point. We 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 don't think that um, picking only one might be representative enough because the the topic is complex. So probably these four aspects are the ones that are more relevant in, in this case. And if you're not clear in any one of them, this means that you're not, you have not clear mind. And uh, apparently the majority of respondents think uh, that yes, they wish consent for reuse. 72%. Sorry. You're preaching to the converted here. Your audience is self-selected. <laughs> uh, it might be biased, yes, at some point. So the poll has been closed, and uh, I guess we can move uh, to the group map. And we would like to ask you if you could explain which category 
you would not allow reuse of your data and add motivations for that in the group map. So out of these different uh, categories, uh, would you would you uh, not allow to reuse of your data and add motivations in the group map? Can you go back a screen so we can see what the different categories are? Because I've forgotten already. <laughs> or put them in the chat. Put the uh, different yeah, categories. Just one second. Uh, I mean, the chat. Thanks. I'll think about it. <laughs> okay. So it's specific category of research, specific typologies of data, specific research goal, specific typology of institution, let's say private, not public. These are all the I also pasted it on the on the chat so you can see the question there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that's a discussion between nonprofit or commercial, but it could be public uh, as well. Uh, it could be um, public private institutions. So, yeah, there's a bit more nuance there. But yes, basically, the question is for profit or not for profit. And uh, yes, definitely you are correct. But uh, <clears throat> we assume that um, people make a decision based on their understanding. And uh, of course, they might not be fully aware, but as long as uh, they got an understanding of the context and their decision is made based on that understanding, uh, that's how it goes. Clearly, one of the points here is that uh, there can be different categories of research, types of data, research goals, and uh, type of institutions. And we can't assume that all the respondents here and uh, the potential patients out there are aware of all the categories that there are. So uh, we, we subsequently assume that uh, your answer here is based on um uh, what you know about these categories yes and thanks chris for this comment i think it's very relevant very very interesting because i think i'm repeating what carlo said but we are going to be influenced from people's reaction to what we ask them and if they don't understand the implication they're going to decide not to share and this will have an impact on our process and the possibility to reuse data, for example. So we might, we, we need to think about how correctly communicate this uh, in a trustful and transparent way. If that's, if we are convinced that it's in the patient's interest to, to allow us for you reuse of their, their data, for example. So communication uh, tends to represent a very relevant drive now. Okay. Uh, so um, this was uh, uh, question number two. Uh, I would move on to question number three. So um, we can still finish um, the vignette of these uh, hypothetical patient 
whenever you're ready, Diana, and can move on to question three. Thank you very much. So this question, in this question, secondary use of clinical data, trial data could be reused both in future research with the same goal of the clinical trial in which they were collected or in research that pursue a different goal. To you, is this aspect relevant on the decision whether to consent to secondary use of your clinical trial data as it is relevant for Robert? Uh, yes or no. So the point here is whether um, the clinical trial data is reused for the same goal of the original research or for a different goal, which might be uh, partially or totally unrelated. And uh, the question is, uh, is this aspect of consistency of uh, current research with the past one uh, be a point uh, in uh, granting uh, uh, the consent to the secondary use? Um, this time, I think the question is pretty straightforward. So there should be less room for uh, ambiguity in a sense. For example, um, research uh, originally, um, data originally collected for cancer research might be reused for other purposes, such as, um, I don't know, uh, even uh, um, research related to um, some aesthetic surgery, these sort of things. So, so far we are uh, 15 and uh, the, roughly... The question could be actually wider than this. I mean, we can consider the initial purpose as being medical research, where secondary purpose could be, I don't know, defense research. So it can, the purpose can be very close as in being a different kind of medical research, but it can also be an entirely different category of research outside the medical area. And the point is whether they should remain consistent with each other or they might be different to a certain extent, very much or just very little. Uh, 15 respondents so far, quite close to 50%. Uh, I would uh, end the poll at this point because I don't see any other coming. So it's roughly 50 50, and uh, we can move on with the group map. And the question here is why? You answered yes or no. Why you think uh, uh, the consent should be granted or not? Can you explain your answer? Are the motivations for granting or not granting uh, your uh, consent to research which is consistent or inconsistent with the previous original research? Let's see. Would always want to know the purpose. I would want to know that I agree at the least. To answer the question, uh, <laughs> but I forgot, and am I Robert or me? Uh, the idea would be to be yourself, but somehow in Robert's shoes. Mm 
um, with more details and how it will be used. So it is not the same as the first trial go. Yet some details uh, might add to the story, but the whole point that we're trying to make here is whether you think that there should be strict consistency between the current and the previous research or not, uh, regardless on the different types of research, whether they are more useful or less useful. Uh, there is no general answer. Well, uh, that that depends. Uh, it's uh, not that easy to classify each and every possible combination. And so for this reason, uh, the first step in addressing this sort of uh, dilemma is to find out whether there needs to be consistency or not. Once we decide that it might be that there's not consistency uh, between this current and the uh, past research, we can then go in um, more details and uh, try to find out to what extent this consistency is required. And uh, okay, so. Uh, let's, uh, uh, yes, please, uh, let's switch to the last question, question number four. Thanks for all your comments. Question number four is, are research subjects willing to reuse your clinical data could be either public institutions, private institutions, or the results of collaboration between both poly public and private ones, like joint ventures. Do you have a preference between one of these three categories, or do you think that it doesn't matter, really? So the poll is open, and uh, we, we would like to know whether you think that discriminating between different subjects um, might be uh, necessary or not. Of course, different subjects have different respond to different incentives. So from this perspective, there might be a relevant difference, but from other perspectives, um, if we put the research on the high priority, it might be that it's not that relevant. So we have uh, 15. 16 respondents and uh, it's not too far away from 50 50 well it's 40 60 almost so 17 respondents so far i would say that uh, on average is the number of respondents that we got so far so i think we can close the poll thank you very much diana and uh, the majority voted no 59%. At this point, we can. I would like to move on to the group map. And the uh, question is, can you name which one of these three uh, options would you prefer to give your consent to reuse your data and add motivations in the group map? So out of these three subjects, public institutions, private institutions, or results of collaboration between public and private uh, which one would you prefer to give your consent, if you have any preference, of course, to reuse, to reuse your data? And if you can add motivations to your answer. Of course, this might be due to different reasons, uh, because as I mentioned before, they respond to different incentives. Typically, private institutions are profit-based, and public, public institutions are
more prone to um, public service. Uh, I'm altruistic and educated. Uh, that's reassuring. Thanks so much. Um, it does not matter which, as long as the research and goals are clear. It's all about what is being researched, not who is doing it. Assuming they are all trustworthy institutions. Um, not important. Is if the institution identifies as public or private or in between, the commercial financial interests are key. Of course, the commercial interest uh, might affect the content of the research, especially whether um, research is about illnesses, for example, that are rare, so where the profit is not that. Uh, uh, high because the numbers are not um, high. Each type of organization has a different purpose, and I think um, we might agree with that. Um, Multi stakeholder environments are the way of the future. These collaborations are more complex but also result in more innovation. And that it's certainly true because they, to some extent, they combine different incentives. And so might be rather complex to manage, but yes, definitely it's a combination of both. What is important is the purpose of the research, not who's doing it. Um, the commercial interest relates not to the treatment or disease, but the data itself. Billions are made. Um, well, the data are collected for specific purposes, I would say, and uh, research might be uh, um, profit-driven or respond to different incentives. Uh, I was checking the time because we are close to the end of our a lot of time for questions, uh, given that uh, these two vignettes uh, took a bit more than expected in terms of time, uh, we decided uh, to skip the third one. And uh, once we're done uh, with all the uh, with all, all the comments in this group map, uh, we can uh, possibly move on with the following stage. I don't see any more comments coming. So at this point, I would give the flow back to Virginia uh, to move on um, with this session. Yes, thank you, Carlo. You're uh, welcome. I know we have like six minutes left, so um, we will uh, basically give you a few last information about facilitate next steps. Uh, as I told you at the beginning, the final goal of this four year project, and we are in year two, is to create uh, an ethical GDPR compliant prototype process for both participants cl clinical trial data return and participant clinical trial data reuse. We were uh, talking about reuse today. What we ideally would like to update POF uh, about maybe next year in a new session uh, is um, about return or we might also imagine with Diana with Piof uh, that were so kind to invite us to give you uh, an update on the development of this project so we we are talking about how to give continuity to this session to and to come back to you with the with updates and news about the project so thank you very much for being here from what I can see and from what I can give you as a first um, 
immediate feedback of this very interesting session is that there were many comments uh, that uh, regarded um, issues and problems and conundrums that we are taking into consideration already in the project, but many others, uh, as much as we were going in depth in your motivation and explanation of your choices, uh, I, I could see that there were new issues we will dedicate more time because our aim is to try to understand more in depth and address all the aspects that are connected to the very complicated uh, problem of data reuse in the clinical trial um, context. So from what I know, um, Piof uh, will send you an email with the recorded session. Am I right, Diana? And what Carlo and I uh, and Veronica will do uh, is to also work on a follow-up email giving you uh, um, uh, an organized and analyzed um, an analysis of the results of this session uh, and uh, a first uh, interpretation of what we got from it. So I think unless Carlo and Veronica have anything to add uh, from my side, I uh, really thank you for being here to give time to this. For us, it was very important and we can assure you that this is going to uh, directly stream in to facilitate as much as we can and that we will use every inch of your feedback. We, we really value it. Uh, so thank you, thank you very much. Nothing to add and thanks also on my side. Thank you very much. One last comment would be that the group map will be open until next Tuesday. So if you'd like to add more comments or any other comments related to the questions, uh, please, please don't, don't hesitate to do so. Thank you very much for your time and your dedication to this, to this session. Have a great evening.